The Rock shared footage of what happened after Raw went off the air. After being told the, sh the show was over, The Rock continued to whip Rhodes with his weight belt and continued to keep taunting Rhodes' mother, quote, what, the show is over and then it stops? F that, The Rock screamed. Your script, F that. <laughs> it was a great, a great segment. As you see camera phone footage that is, uh, which is horizontal, by the way, or uh, it is vertical, not horizontal. It's very annoying, but they, they had it and it showed The Rock and it showed The Rock getting the camera crew and screaming at them to get back in because he's continuing to lay the beat down and continued to whip Cody and did a hell of a job with it. As Davis talked about on Wrestling Observer Radio with Dwayne, he wants it to be real and as real as possible and he's brought real interest into everything that's been going on in real drama that is for sure we've got real blood as well too and as dave talks about in this week's wrestling observer newsletter don't plan on seeing a whole lot of that but the door is open for it to when it's time to use it be utilized and have it utilized very well as it was on monday night after raw Tonight on SmackDown, we have four matches and one segment that is official. Dakota Kai will face off against Bianca Belair. There are two qualifying matches for the six-pack ladder match at WrestleMania. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller against the Street Profits. And New Catch Republic, Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate against Legado del Fantasma's Angel Garzo and Umberto Carrillo. Also, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton will face off against Pretty Deadly. It's going to be interesting to see how that goes, because obviously you're going to need some drama between Kevin Owens and Randy Orton in that match. But them also playing off of Pretty Deadly ought to be pretty entertaining. And Jade Cargill will make her first official appearance as a member of the SmackDown roster. In this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, I've said that a lot today. It's available for subscribers up on the front page right now. Dave is talking about there being 13 matches for WrestleMania weekend. Seven on one night, six on another night. That seems to be the working plan right now. When you look at what we have, Roman Reigns and The Rock against Cody and Rollins, that's night one. Night two, Roman Reigns against Cody Rhodes. Also on night two, at least we will assume it will be Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. EO Sky against Bailey, Rhea Ripley against Becky Lynch, Gunther against Sami Zayn, LA Knight and AJ Styles, Jey Uso against Jimmy Uso, Logan Paul against Randy Orton against Kevin Owens for the US title, and the men's tag team six pack ladder match for the tag team titles. That would leave us three matches to go if what Dave is saying is correct. The women's tag team title will likely be on the line. Kyrie and Asuka against Naomi and, Bian Naomi and Bianca Belair. That seems to be the most obvious thing. One, it gets Bianca Belair on the show. And two, with the Dakota Kai-Bianca Belair match and the story they've been telling about Bianca talking to Naomi about her friendship with Bailey. We saw that all kind of come to a head last week. We have definitive sides laid out. So that is probably going to be one of the matches left to go on those two nights. One of them, again, also, too, and I could be dead wrong about this, but when it comes to the six-pack ladder match, we have Finn Balor and Damian Priest. We have DIY, The New Day, and Awesome Truth. You got three babyface tag teams in there from Raw. It only makes sense to me that Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, two young guys who WWE obviously wants to be part of their future, makes sense to me that they would be in that match and the Street Profits, it leaves them open to then team with Bobby Lashley against AOP and Karrion Cross. You can throw in B-Fab and, and Scarlet Bordeaux if you want to. You still have Paul Elring at ringside as well, too, for AOP and Karrion Cross. But that seems to make the most sense for a match to happen. So in that case, Theory and Waller can go on be in the ladder match. When it comes to New Catch Republic against Angel Garza and Umberto Carrillo tonight, it's really interesting Garza and Carrillo would probably be perfect to be in that match, but 
it's not like Dunn and, and Bait wouldn't be perfect to be in there as well, too. So that's kind of a toss-up right now as far as who can make it in. I'll say Dunn and Bait just because the last match, if we have 13 spots left to go, in my opinion, the way it looks, Rey Mysterio Jr., Carlito, and Dragon Lee against Santos Escobar, Angel Garza, and Alberto Carrillo, if they go ahead and lose tonight, that seems to make a lot of sense to me. What also makes sense, though, is to add a couple of people to that mix. Because if you're not going to do like a one-on-one -on -one match between Ray and Santos, and that doesn't look like it's going to be the case, well, why not throw in Dominic Mysterio and J.D. McDonough on that side, and then Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro on the side of Ray Mysterio, Carlito, and Dragon Lee? That seems like a 10-man tag would be, I think, a really cool Lucha-based match with Carlito in there. I think that could actually be a really fun way to open up one of the nights or at least be there as a break with all of the other stuff that you have going on. So I think there's going to be some combination that way. And then that gives us 13 matches. If you wanted to even out the show, you could have a 14th match because... You don't really have anything left for some of the women that are there. So you could do some sort of, you could do a women's battle royal, especially if you do a men's battle royal on next week's SmackDown, have that Andre the Giant Memorial. You could do that on Friday and you could add a women's battle royal on one of the two WrestleMania nights that could come down to Tiffany Stratton, Nia Jax, and Jade Cargill. Wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. Doesn't have to be done, but... Again, if you're going to even out the card, maybe that could work. But again, tonight after SmackDown, we should have a real good idea on what they're going to be offering in full for WrestleMania. And we'll see if they wait until next week before they start divvying up the days so everybody's going to know what they're going to have. Two WrestleMania house shows, uh, Road to WrestleMania house shows this weekend. Uh, for those of you in the Manchester, New Hampshire area on Saturday, WWE is going to be the SNHU Arena. And on Sunday at the War Memorial Arena in Syracuse, New York, that will lead them in on Monday night to the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. That's where Raw is taking place. The only thing we have announced for that show so far is an eight-man tag team match between DIY and The New Day against The Judgment Day in full. Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, Finn Balor, and J.D. McDonough. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute... Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.